few months ago, I released a two-part series where Ryan and I discussed our top 50 coasters. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I recommend checking them out when you have some time. Now, something you may not know is that almost a year before we recorded those videos, I made a prediction as to what my top 25 will be at the end of the year. Needless to say, most of my predictions were incorrect. So in this video, I'm going to look back at what my predictions were before the 2023 season started and compare them to what my actual top 25 is. In part one of the top 50 series, I discussed what my coaster preferences are, but I'll mention them in this video as well in case you're either unfamiliar with what I value in a coaster or if you happen to forget what I said in that video. Unlike most enthusiasts, airtime is not my top priority. Instead, I value coasters with launches, intensity, and speed more. Hopefully this will help you see where my predictions were coming from. Here's a brief rundown of how this comparison will work. First, I will look at where I projected each coaster to rank. Then I'll go over where it actually ranks. For that, I'll first discuss where they rank out of my entire list of 294 coasters, and then if necessary, I'll state where each coaster ranks while counting dual track coasters as one coaster. Once I get through the predicted ranking, I'll briefly go over what my actual top 25 is so you can see how it differs from what I predicted at the start of 2023. With that said, let's begin the comparison. My predicted number 25 was Max Force at Six Flags Great America. This SNS air launch coaster is by far the best ride in the park. I know it gets a lot of flack for being extremely short, but that's not a deal breaker for me. The launch and the Heartland Roll are both in my top 10 favorite coaster elements of all time, and that's why it ranks so high. This coaster currently ranks at number 26, and no dual track coasters rank above it. My predicted number 24 was Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This RMZ hybrid is on the smaller side, but it packs in so much ejected road time while throwing in some well-timed inversions. Some may call this the best ride in the park or even in the whole state, and I can totally understand this argument. Based on my 2021 Virginia trip, this is my second favorite coaster at King's Dominion, as well as my second favorite in the state. It currently ranks at number 25 on my list, with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 23 was Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. As of May of 2024, this is currently one of just two Mach Rides Extreme spinning coasters out there, and is the only one in the US. The spinning aspect of Time Traveler makes it a super rewritable coaster because you can be facing a different direction for each element. It has two LSM launches, three inversions, a twisted hill, and an amazing drop out of the station. While not my favorite coaster at Silver Dollar City, I can see how one may have it as their favorite ride in the park, and it currently ranks at number 21 with no dual track coasters ranked ahead of it. My predicted number 22 was Scream and Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. This is the coaster that made me an enthusiast, so it's a sentimental favorite of mine. It combines solid airtime with a great sense of speed and a fantastic setting. Most of the layout is hidden within the woods, making for an excellent night ride. While it's not the smoothest wind coaster I've been on, I think Scream and Eagle is smoother than multiple wind coasters that opened after it. This is the first coaster where my prediction actually was correct, as it currently ranks in number 22 and has no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 21 was Phoenix at Knobles. This keeps winning the Golden Ticket Award for the world's best wind coaster, and given its reputation, I had high hopes for it. Based on my two rides this past July, I was really impressed, although it's definitely overrated by GTA standards. The airtime was awesome, especially on the finale, and it was one of the smoothest wind coasters I've been on. Despite thoroughly enjoying Phoenix, I realized that several coasters showcased my preferences better, so this is the first prediction where I was way off. I currently have it ranked at number 45, and there's only one dual track coaster ahead of it, that being Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom. Counting that as just one coaster, Phoenix ranks at number 44. My predicted number 20 was Mr. Freeze's Six Flags St. Louis. This ride here is one of the most intense and overall consistent coasters I've ever ridden. The launch is solid, although it's not the best I've experienced. The inverted top has one of the most demonic elements ever created, with strong positives going into it and solid airtime coming out of it. The overbang turn is fairly tame on the trip out, but is insane on the return trip. And then the spike is always a blast for experience, especially in the back row since you go the highest. Mr. Freeze has started to make a strong case for being my new favorite in the park, but as of now, I can't give it the top spot. That being said, I currently have it ranked at number 16 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 19 was Steel Force at Dorney Park. I originally wasn't too hyped for this coaster before 2023, but my hopes for it went up after riding Mamba Worlds of Fun the year prior. That is a coaster I would most compare to Steel Force, and the mid-course break run was turned off when I rode Mamba, resulting in a ridiculous finale. Even though I knew the mid-course break run on Steel Force would slow the train down, I still had very high expectations for it. Unfortunately, it didn't meet them, making this another prediction that was way off. Steel Force ranks down in number 50, with three dual track coasters ahead of it, those being Space Mountain and Magic Kingdom, along with two coasters named Racer, one being at Kings Island and the other one being at Kennywood. Counting those three as just one coaster individually, Steel Force lands at number 47. My predicted number 18 was Thunderbird at Holiday World. This is my first ever launch coaster, and since launches are a key factor in determining what my top coasters are, Thunderbird is another sentimental favorite of mine. Not only does it have a great launch, but it also has four extremely fun inversions, along with an incredible near miss through a barn. While I've always enjoyed this coaster, over the past few years I've come to realize just how intense this coaster is. I've even said that Thunderbird has been running similar to a BM invert with how the positives were making my legs go numb, along with the inversions causing me to gray out. The sentimental value, along with the intensity, is why it currently ranks at number 17, and no dual track coasters are ahead of it. My predicted number 17 was Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This is RMC's first coaster to use their wooden topper track, and is widely considered one of the best wooden coasters out there. While it's a short ride, Outlaw Run has no dead elements, and it never lets up in 
until the final breaks. I visited Silver Dollar City at the end of July, which is a little under six months after I made this prediction, and I got 20 rides on Outlaw Run. These rides were way better than my rides in 2017, 2020, and 2021, and they made me wonder why I projected it to rank this low. I got on Outlaw Run eight more times in March, and those rides solidified its ranking in my current top 10. After we're in my top 10 of ranks, I have it ranked at number 7, with no dual track coasters ranked above it. My predicted number 16 was Storm Runner at Hershey Park. Out of all the coasters at Hershey Park, this is the one I was most excited for, given how it was a launch coaster. After 10 rides, I was confident in saying this was my favorite. I know that's an unpopular opinion, especially when you have Sky Rush and now Wildcat Revenge in the same park. What puts Storm Runner over the top is its amazing hydraulic launch. This launch blew me away on each of my rides because of how punchy it is. I also enjoyed the Cobra Loop and Flying Snake Dive, as they are some of the most unique inversions I've experienced. Storm Runner is an underrated roller coaster, and it currently ranks at number 19 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 15 was Maverick at Cedar Point. I've always said this Intamin Blitz has everything a good layout needs. It doesn't matter if you're wanting an excellent drop, good airtime, inversions, or anything else in between. You name it, Maverick has it. Cedar Point does have several coasters that outclass it in terms of stats, but this coaster proves its stats aren't everything, and it's not uncommon to see it ranked highly in everyone's lists. Maverick is the second coaster whose placement I correctly predicted, as it currently ranks at number 15 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 14 was Intimidator 305 in King's Dominion. As of May of 2024, which is when I'm recording this, this coaster is currently called Project 305, but until it gets an official new name, I'm calling it based on its original name. Widely considered the most intense coaster out there, this is my 200th coaster and I only got two rides on it. Thankfully, both rides were outstanding as the sense of speed and intensity were downright incredible. I wish I could rank this coaster higher than number 14, but until I get more rides on it, I just can't do it. I will say this is the second prediction in a row that I got correct as it currently ranks at number 14 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My prediction number 13 was Boss at Six Flags St. Louis. This is probably my most ranked coaster and up until recently, it was ranked inside my top 10. I had a weird feeling going into 2023 that Boss wouldn't run as good as it did in recent years. To an extent, I was right about that, as it did slip a bit due to how inconsistent it ran last year. Usually, American Thunder is the most inconsistent coaster at Six Flags St. Louis, but last year it wasn't as inconsistent as Boss. Still, Boss has got a great sense of speed with solid airtime and intense laterals, but it's definitely not the smoothest ride out there. However, on the days in 2023 in which Boss did run great, it was excellent, and that's why it ranks as high as it does. In addition, each of my 2024 rides on it thus far have been excellent. This prediction was almost correct, as it currently ranks in number 12 with no dual track coasters ranked ahead of it. My predicted number 12 was Mamba at Worlds of Fun. This Morgan Hypercoaster knocked my socks off when I first rode it in 2022. The sense of speed and intensity in the first half, along with the airtime in the second half, made for one of the most surprisingly great coaches I've ever been on. A lot of people may not have Mamba ranked as high as I do, but I've only ridden it without the mid-course turned on, so I've only seen it at its peak. Mamba is actually my favorite steel coaster in Missouri, and I almost nailed this prediction too, as it ranks at number 13 with no dual track coasters ranked over it. My predicted number 11 was El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is considered by many as the best wind coaster in the world, and since I visited Six Flags Great Adventure after its extensive refurbishment in 2023, I had very high hopes for El Toro. I rode this coaster twice, with one ride coming in the very front and the other in the second and back row, and I definitely prefer the front row. My ride in the second and back row was super disappointing, as the first drop and rolling Thunderhill were super overhyped, and the ride was way rougher than I expected. Maybe if I only rode the front, I'd rank El Toro higher, but because of how underwhelming my ride in the second and back row was, it ranks at number 41, with Space Mountain being the only dual track coaster ranked ahead of it. Counting Space Mountain as one coaster, El Toro lands at number 40. My predicted number 10 was Orion at Kings Island. This B&M Giga, and yes, it is a Giga, gets a lot of flack for not having as many low-to-the-ground moments. And while the sense of speed may be the weakest of all the Gigas as a result of this, it's by no means a deal-breaker. The sense of speed is exceptional regardless, and the layout is full of awesome elements. The speed hill and the twisted hill before the final break run stand out to me here. Orion is by far the best ride at Kings Island, and it gets better every single year. I missed this prediction by one spot, so I currently have it ranked at number 9 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 9 was Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. After being blown away by Mamba, I was super excited to ride what's widely considered the best Morgan coaster ever built. Thanks to a sense of speed that was so much better than Mamba's and a lot of wild ejector airtime, Phantom's Revenge definitely lived up to the hype. I could only get 4 rides on this coaster due to the weather closing Kennywood an hour and a half early on my full day and line for it being really long during the couple hours I spent on the way back home, and it doesn't help that I was running one train bolt days. Phantom's Revenge is definitely my top coaster in Pennsylvania, and it currently ranks at number 11 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number 8 was Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens Tampa. This RMC Hyper Hybrid has taken the number 1 spot for a lot of enthusiasts over the past 2 years has been open, and it's not hard to see why. After the train goes down what is my favorite first drop, this coaster absolutely tears to the layout, and it doesn't give you a chance to catch your breath until you hit the final breaks. That is, if you don't ride it in the morning. If you ride Iron Gwazi in the morning, it'll run extremely slow and leave you disappointed. If you ride it during any other time of day besides the morning, it'll knock your socks off. Because of the disappointing morning rides, it doesn't rank quite as high for me as it does for others, but it definitely deserves a spot in my top 10, so I have it ranked at number 10 with no dual track coasters ranking above it. My predicted number 7 
was the Incredible Hulk coaster at Islands of Adventure. This is by far the best B&M set down, especially in the state of Florida, and is the most intense coaster I've been on. It features an incline launch, seven fantastic inversions, and what I consider to be the world's greatest on-ride soundtrack. The latter is why I rode Hulk 39 times over the five days I spent at Universal in 2022, and I couldn't get enough of it. After my very last ride on Hulk, I started to miss the ride, and after thinking about how much fun I had on it, it didn't drop on my list, but rather it moved up. This coaster currently ranks at number four with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number six was Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. This was far and away my favorite coaster at Cedar Point, and was beloved by enthusiasts for one reason and one reason only, that hydraulic launch. Top Thrill Dragster launched riders from zero to 120 miles an hour in four seconds, and it was my favorite coaster element I had experienced at the time. I feel extremely lucky to have ridden Top Thrill Dragster as I rode it in July of 2021, with my first ever ride coming exactly one month before its accident. Even though I projected it to slip a little on my list because of how short it was, I came to realize that very few coasters showcase my preferences for launches, speed, and intensity better than Top Thrill Dragster. Because of that, I moved it up in my list, and it currently ranks at number three, with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicted number five was King Nika at Six Flags Great Adventure. I'm not going to go too much in depth with this one, as most of what I said about Dragster can apply to this coaster. I will say that I do prefer King Nika's launch over Dragster's, and consequently, the speed and intensity were even greater than Dragster. I know it's controversial to rank King Nika higher than Dragster, but given how Cod did everything better besides the restraints, I can't overlook that. It currently ranks at number two, with no dual track coasters above it. My predicted number four was Fury 325 at Carowinds. This is widely considered the best B&M out there, and up until last year, I agree with that. I was supposed to go to Pennsylvania in the second week of June, but the wildfires up in Canada pushed that trip back. Because of that, I went to some parks in the southeast instead, Carowinds being one of them. Unfortunately, my 2023 rides on Fury weren't quite as good as my 2022 rides. I'm not sure what it was about it, but the bite it had in 2022 wasn't there in 2023. I initially predicted Fury to rank over the Intamin Stratus because of the length, but my aforementioned 2023 rides knocked it down a bit. So it ranks in number 8 with no dual track coasters ranked above it. My predicted number 3 was Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This was my first RMC when I rode it back in 2016, but I didn't remember anything about my one ride on it. Prior to my 2023 rides that this prediction was based on, I knew it gained a mixed reputation after being neutered for the past couple years. Given how it still had its launch, along with an awesome terrain based layout that I imagined would lead to a great sense of speed, I projected Lightning Rod to rank really high. While it does rank really high on my list, my prediction was a few spots off, as it ranks at number 5 with no dual track coasters ahead of it. My predicting number 2 was Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This is arguably the most complete coaster ever built, as it's essentially Maverick but with better theming. Given how Maverick ranks high for countless enthusiasts, it's easy to see why Velocicoaster is a lot of people's number 1. You got two LSM launches, multiple solid air to moments, and four inversions, including the world's best inversion, the Mosasaurus roll. As good as Velocicoaster is, however, I don't think it showcases my preferences as the best of any coaster I've been on, so that's why it doesn't rank as high as I initially predicted. But I'd be wrong if I said Velocicoaster is not top 10 worthy, so it ranks at number 6 and no dual track coasters rank above it. Finally, my predicted number one was Voyage to Holiday World. If you ask me, this is easily the best wind coaster in the world. And no, I'm not judging it based on how it runs during Hollywood nights. Voyage is one of the most intense wind coasters out there, one of the most intense coasters out there, period. It has tons of airtime, as well as the best sense of speed of any wind coaster, and it's non-stop until the final breaks. I don't see any coaster out there with the exception of maybe Formula Rosa beating Voyage, so this is the final prediction that I got correct, as it still remains my number one coaster to this day. Now that I've gone over my predicted top 25, here's my current top 25 as of May of 2024. Number 25 is Twisted Timbers. Number 24 is Mako. Number 23 is Wildcat Revenge. Number 22 is Screaming Eagle. Number 21 is Time Traveler. Number 20 is Airy Force One. Number 19 is Storm Runner. Number 18 is Big Bear Mountain. Number 17 is Thunderbird. Number 16 is Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. Number 15 is Maverick. Number 14 is Intimidator 305 slash Project 305. Number 13 is Mamba. Number 12 is Boss. Number 11 is Phantom's Revenge. Number 10 is Iron Gwazi. Number 9 is Orion. Number 8 is Fury 325. Number 7 is Outlaw Run. Number 6 is Velocicoaster. Number 5 is Lightning Rod. Number 4 is The Incredible Hulk Coaster. Number 3 is Top Thrill Dragster. Number 2 is King Nika. Number 1 is Voyage. As you can see, most of the coasters that I initially predicted did make my top 25, even though most of their placements were off. And then you had some coasters like El Toro and Phoenix that did not make it, whereas others like Wildcat Revenge and Big Bear Mountain did manage to break in. Before I end the video, I'm going to discuss a couple coasters I'll be riding this year that I can see breaking into my top 25. The first coaster I'm 100% certain will break in, and that's Mr. Freeze's Six Flags Over Texas. I did ride this in 2019, and I currently have it ranked 14 spots below the one in St. Louis. Thankfully, I'll be riding it again at the start of June, and I'll make sure to try the backwards train in the back row, which I didn't do last time. Plus, I'll be able to ride it forwards for the first time, which I'm super excited about. Next is another launch coaster, Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is probably the best coaster I've ridden that focuses on just pure fun, and it has three excellent launches. This is one of the first few coasters outside of my top 25, and once I get back on it at the end of June, I can see it getting back in if it's just 
as fun as I remember it being. The next two coasters come from a park that I desperately need to revisit, having only been in 2017. This is Kentucky Kingdom. The first of two coasters that I can see breaking into my top 25 is Lightning Run. I rode this Chance Hyper GTX twice in 2017, and I don't remember this ride much at all. Probably the only thing I remember is that I got stapled hard, so my experience on it was not very good. If the air time on Lightning Run is as strong as people say it is, then I think it has an outside shot of breaking in. The same thing can be said about Storm Chaser in the same park. This is currently my lowest ranked RMC based on my one ride in 2017, and I got stapled so the experience was about as bad as it could get. This coaster is often compared to Twisted Timbers, which is currently the last coaster in my top 25. I only got two rides on Twisted Timbers, and the more I ride a coaster, the more I like it. I'll be going at the end of July, and assuming the crowds at Kentucky Kingdom aren't as bad as the crowds I experienced at King's Dominion, and if I'm able to avoid getting stapled, then I'm expecting Storm Chaser to enter my top 25. Another RMC that I'm 100% expecting to enter my top 25 is Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. This is closed on me during my one and currently only trip to Six Flags Fiesta Texas in July of 2019, and everybody raves about this thing. I always hear people saying it's the best coaster in Texas, and the first drop and drop off the quarry are the best airtime moments ever. Given the massive amount of hype, I'm expecting this to be a top tier RMC. You also have Wonder Woman Gold Lasso Coaster, but I recently found out that this coaster is most likely going to be closed when I go to Roller Coaster Rodeo. But in the slight off chance that it opens, I can maybe see it breaking in. Finally, there's Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk. Ever since this Gravity Group got its extensive refurbishment, I've heard rave reviews about this thing, with some saying it's one of the best wind coasters out there. If it's anything like Voyage, I'm very excited to see how this wind coaster holds up, especially since the other two Gravity Groups I've ridden, Switchback and Mindblower, were either not that impressive or unbearably rough. I think Boardwalk Bullet will for sure be in my top 25 at the end of the year. But how high? Well, I'll just have to wait and find out. That wraps up this video where I compared my predicted top 25 at the start of 2023 to what my current top 25 is. I hope you found this comparison to be pretty interesting, and I'm curious to know if any of the new coasters I'm predicting to be in my top 25 are currently in yours. Be sure to post a comment about that in the description of this video. Of course, before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else right now. If you're new to this channel and like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.